Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel at VHG Technic, still the same garage. And in this video, we will continue with the V10 engine, which is supposed to go to Florida for the Audi S8 for a customer. And finally, everything is back. So there are a few issues. I don't know what's going on with the UK, but uh, we were just struggling to get the kink racing bearings, which are finally here. So we did find a direct supplier or some kind of a company in Sweden. So they sort it out in probably week time. Both of the cylinder heads are back from the machine shop, so we have new stand valve seals, new guides, valve brushed in, and we also have all new 40 valve springs. Reason for that is it's the same part number like in the B8, RS4, RS5s, and they have some issues over the years, so just to be sure we replace them. Crankshaft is back, that was just on polishing and a few checks, and the block was literally cleaned up, it was uh, checked as well, everything seems to be fine. Old all 10 cylinders has uh, no issues no scratches so it'll be all good also i definitely want to thanks to om parts in slovakia which supplies all the genuine parts for this project it's uh, quite important to mention them because probably uh, the guy in america wouldn't get it done because they've done quite good price especially on the intake just on the intake alone uh, compared to tps we save like 500 pounds so that's after the import tax and all the fees. They help us to make it happen. I will leave the link under the video. You can go and have a look. They are dispatching worldwide, so it's probably worth to give them a shot when you're struggling with some junior parts. So as usual, on the beginning, we will clean up everything on the block. We can put the mine end bearings and the crankshaft. We will measure the clearances with all these gauges, the plastic gauges, and yeah, we will better check them now than have some issues afterwards. Even that everything from the manufacturer should be 100%, we just want to make sure to have the build done correctly from first step, because it's easier to do any changes now than when the engine is in the car already, so, so yeah. Okay, we're going to clean the stuff from underneath and let's get to it. Okay guys, so we started and we are actually done because the bearing, as you can probably tell, it's too big. So we have the incorrect bearings. That's a good news. So thank you for watching. We will see you in the next video. See ya. Several days later. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel with the same video. Two weeks later, unfortunately. Uh, special thanks to OM Parts from Slovakia again because TPS told me they are on back order. So we have the genuine bearings here and we can finally put them in the block and uh, start measuring them. And as you can tell the difference between the bearing which should be in the car and the one which I was told it is for the V10, but different V10 is a different bearing. So we will get everything ready and we will be measuring the clearance between the cranks and the bearings. So let's get to it. Everything is fine, take me to my grave, bury me alive, keeping me astray. Hard to say goodbye to who I am today. We tied everything to the second newton meter spec and as you can tell there's a g stamp another g stamp g g and g and g that's not a g spot of the engine don't worry that's just telling you what color of the shell we should use so in that case it was all yellow so we put all yellow marking bearings on there uh it doesn't necessarily mean it will be good now you can have all sort of different bearings which is actually the thickness of the coating so now we have to take it all off and check how the each clearance looks like I'm quite happy with it. Of course, it's not like exactly the same, but if we are comparing these genuine bearings compared to the King Racing bearings, the King Racing bearings have like more clearance, so it's floating more on the oil. 
So this one is more close to 0 0.38. All of them are pretty much the same. Uh, the King Racing bearings were closer to 0 0.50. It's, it's still in the spec, however. It's just the King Racing bearings have like uh, more clearance. So what we will have to do now, clean up all that red stuff from the crankshaft. We will be putting the Ginian rings into each cylinder. We have to measure them if we have the correct gaps in the rings. Then we have to assemble them onto the piston rings. And once they're gonna be inside the ball, uh, we will just put them onto the crank. We'll be measuring the clearance in between the conrod bearings and the crankshaft. So yeah, let's continue. Okay guys, so we are done with the measuring. Well, 10 cylinder, more time, but uh, literally they are all in spec as it should be. We don't have to adjust anything, which is fine. Also very important calculations. If you're gonna take all these numbers together, you will get to a number 3.65. If you're gonna divide it by 10, because we got 10 cylinders, it will come average of 0 0.36, which is absolutely irrelevant. So nobody cares, but uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. Uh, we mark all the pistons, uh, which one was measured in which bore, and all the piston rings are on there already. So we can continue putting the pistons into the block of the engine. Then we will put the crankshaft in there uh, without the bottom plate so far, and we will be measuring the clearance between the conrods and the crankshaft. So let's get to it. We have first five in, cylinder six to ten, all sorted. I'm not sure if you can see the arrow, but you can, all of them are aiming towards the front. If you have a replacement and it's aiming other side, but you have these cuts for the inlet valves, for the inlet valves, it should be fine. They're all the same. It's just literally a guiding so you don't mess up. Otherwise, you might end up with a bent valve. So we will continue with cylinders one to five. We'll just clean up the bore a bit, put a bit of oil in them and we can continue putting the rest of them in. Progress, uh, all the pistons with rods are inside. I'm just gonna mark now which one is which. Uh, these are the ones which are actually like broke off, so they will only fit to the other piece. You can't mix them up. And yeah, we have to clean up the surface uh, for the conrods where the bearing will sit, so they uh, nice and clean with no oil or grease. And then we're just gonna put the crankshaft in with assembly loop in the bearings, and we'll be measuring the clearance in between the rods and the crankshaft.
Okay guys, so progress. Uh, we have the crankshaft in, we managed to connect all the conrods to it. We done some checks and measurements. All of them were like 0 050, 0 038. The only one which is a bit tighter is uh, number one actually, but it's still in the spec. So I don't want to do anything with it. Uh, the main thing is with the check it is not too tight, so it shouldn't be a problem. From the previous videos where you're seeing, uh, as you probably know, we're replacing all the bolts for new ones, especially the Conrad ones, because they are stretching, so they need to be replaced. Also, from the previous video, you probably did remember, if you don't remember, these are the bearings. So all of them are literally three to one and they are gone. This will seize up very soon. And this is answer to everyone who's asking me what do we think about cars and this and that and every used car is very individual first of all second of all i can't tell until we strip it down like we just strip down the v10 like we just strip down many other cars and unfortunately all of the cars in the uk uh we have too many owners are more like a project car than anything else uh mine thing i can't forget to put these truss bearings in we have new ones as always and also we have to degrease the whole block one two three four gaskets needs to be put in there and once we will be in place we have to tight uh, the conrod bolts to 90 newton meters so we will be checking if the crankshaft is spinning after every session we will do and yeah let's get to it Okay, so we have a day after we put the sump on. We also did replace, as you've seen, the thermostat, which was placed in the oil pump, the one-way valve, which is helping the oil to stop when you're gonna shut the car off. And all the gaskets, you can tell that the gaskets are like freaking old and they're just cracking. Not the rubber anymore. We also did put the pin for the crankshaft, so it's in the timing position. Now the plan is we will turn the engine, put it on the table. We will have to continue from the back to assemble the timing chains and everything. Uh, once all the gear setups and everything will be in there, uh, we will continue with the cylinder heads. So the progress, we put the cylinder head on there, along with the rear timing chain cover with the rear crankshaft seal. So uh, as usual, we did put a bit of the oil onto the fret and also onto the washer. So it's nice to slide when you're gonna tie them down. Now we will be tightening them in a sequence, in a correct order, 30, 60 Newton meters, and then 90 and 90 degrees. As soon as it's all on, uh, I have to clean up all these edges because some of them like for example here when we get it back from the machine shop from time to time there are a few defects what we have to sort out before we put the camshafts in uh, anyways when the camshaft will be put in the place i will first uh, put them without the rocker arms without the hydraulic lifters as well we will try if they're spinning nice and freely and then uh, it's just a few bits really. The middle needs to be completed along with the oil filter housing and everything. And like I mentioned, we will not put any accessories there, only water pump and a few pipes. The rest of it will be taken from the S8, which is in America. It's still running, everything is on there. So I just make sure we have all the gaskets and just refit everything from the car in it.
Okay, guys, so we will continue. The camshafts and everything are on. I did have to clean a few spots here and there, so the cams are spinning nice and freely. I don't see a problem. Um, so actually, we put it back together. First, I was trying without the rocker arms and the hydraulic lifters. Uh, they were not replaced. I don't see anything wrong with them. So I did check them when I was tripping the car. None of them were soft or anything. So we are using the ones which were in the engine. Uh, we put a new gasket onto the top of the cylinder head for the carrier. And uh, I have to finally finish off the whole timing chain setup. So that means the cylinder head tensioners will be installed. Already put a new slider in there. But before we want to do that, we have these tubes which are going through the heads um, like coolant tubes so the original one what I remove look like this and I don't think it will be a good idea to use them again so what did I do I called TPS and what the TPS told me forget about them they're not making them no more so for the V10 you can't buy these anymore they're obsolete so what did we do we did have a look around the workshop everywhere and I did find out that actually these ones are the same like S5 V8. Luckily, we did have a spare engine in the special back room over there, the Harry Potter room. And uh, I just cleaned them up, put new O-rings and everything, assemble them back in there. See all the gaskets, it's quite hard rubber, which is already cracking. So it's always good after 15 years, replace all the O-rings, all the gaskets, everything. So yeah, next step is we finally have the covers ready. Uh, we will be assembling the whole timing chain back in and we still have to do the middle cooler and stuff. So still plenty of things to do. Okay guys, so I've done the timing, turn the engine. And as you can tell, this is not good. So how I was cleaning the camshaft just unfortunately one of them didn't lock up so while i was turning it the camshaft just uh, was turning until it locked up then the camshaft went with it and the result is we are basically a full camshaft just the angle out so i already did put the crankshaft pin back in place the other side is fine but we have to redo bank one which is cylinders for on to five Okay guys, so you can see that the crankshaft is in the position. Also the camshaft are nicely lining up now, both sides. So we can continue with the covers. And here we are the day after. I'm looking at the engine, which is almost finished, ready to go to the America. And I must say it looks pretty good. Obviously, we clean it in the house as much as we can. Roy in the machine shop done some cleaning for us. Well, we have the steaming machine for all the components. It can be better. It's not like a refurbed unit, like brand new. Uh, obviously, we try to keep the cost down as well because everything costs money. And if I really have to get it like clean aluminium, uh, we would probably have to outsource it to a company which will charge us quite lots of money for cleaning such a big engine but yeah this is the result so i'm not complaining at all obviously it looks clean if you're really peaky you can tell like it's, it doesn't look like brand new yet, but that wasn't the purpose. The purpose was to make it mechanically sound, which I think it will be. The whole job was mostly done like on the weekends and nights and stuff. So uh, as I mentioned, I'm not charging uh, the guy no labor. So it's just material. We have the special sheet, how much material he spent on such a V10 engine. And yeah, the only problematic thing was uh, what went wrong was the camshaft adjuster, which wasn't looking place. So uh, we sort out uh, the timing again. Mm, she's up to something. But uh, we have all the spare parts ready to go uh, with the engine. And you can probably tell there's loads of things missing from it. The reason for that is we try to save weight for the shipping. 
uh, we try to be under a certain weight because over those kilograms uh, the shipping is absolutely mental stupid money so at this particular moment cheapest one is FedEx uh, like a pallet and it's 900 pounds to America four to six days which is not bad uh, it's a uh, still a big piece of a uh, engineering it's quite heavy how it sits and yeah um, it's just few things was missing from it but that will be all done on site because like I said Philip the S8 owner have a fully running engine so everything what we can use like alternator air conditioning pump all the piping and uh, rails and stuff what don't need to be sent out will be taken it from the vehicle and yeah it was pretty much fun so Let's have a look at the list, how much such an engine cost and what we actually bought for it. So I have the specialist. I'm really hoping Philip ain't gonna be pissed off. I'm telling the prices out loud, but Unleash it will give you a bit of idea if you wanna buy a car, which Unleash on the UK market don't have as much as value, probably in the rest of the world. They're more expensive to buy. S6, S8 with the V10 engine. But UK market at the moment is a bit down. You can get the car for silly money, but you also might end up with a very silly bill. And I mean silly, like very silly bill. Uh, also, the whole timing worked out pretty nicely because when I get touch with uh, Philip, uh, luckily there was an engine for sale, which was in running condition, sort of. And the engine was 1,650 uh, pounds. Then again, big shout out to OM Parts from Slovakia because they supply mainly the intake for us, which was really cheap compared to the other prices. And they also supply us everything pretty quickly. So if you wanna buy some genuine parts from Slovakia, they are shipping worldwide, leave it the link under the video. Uh, we actually took uh, parts over five grand in euros from them. And unfortunately I messed up the order from the catalog. They have a few things like gaskets, which shows me there's like one and there were more. So we also have to involve TPS uh, with some O-rings, gaskets, bolts, which were missing, which was another 400 pounds. Then I ordered the King racing bearings from Sweden. Um, I spoke with the guy who's selling them. He told me, yeah, it's a V10, these bearings will fit. We order them and they will not fit. So we have to get them from OM parts, at least from, for the crank and to the block. The race bearings for the Conros, they are the same size, so we use those. Uh, the OM parts bearings were 310 euros. The race bearings for the Conros were like 400 pounds. Plus we have to pay Roy for the machine shop, which was not 850 for uh, do up the two cylinder heads and polish the crank a bit for us. And of course we have a shipping of 917 pounds. So total in dollars, uh, it comes to over $13,000, which is probably about 10,000 pounds, I believe, in material. There's no labor involved so far. And yeah, um, it was an engine which didn't fail. It was still in a running condition, same condition where you want to buy a car in, but nobody knows how long it will be running for because you see the condition of the bearings and all the other components. So a bit of a sad condition overall, but it's definitely cheaper to rebuild the engine when it's not seized, damaged, Conrad went out and all the funny things. Uh, to actually strip it fully down and do a reconditioning on the engine, which just need polishing and replacing a few bits here and there. But it is still mental money. From the point of view, was it worth it or was it worth it? Well, hmm, definitely not, because the car is probably worth about 15 to $18,000 in the US, he already spent a bit of money in it, but it's the car he wanted uh, and he's gonna keep it probably forever. Uh, the good thing, what he can still claim a bit of money back is that he have a full running engine in the car, which is sort of in low mileage, so he can probably keep it or sell it, I don't know what he wanna get with it, we will see. But uh, next up is, I have to put it uh, on a pallet I have to strap the engine down, have to create like a cradle around it so nobody can see in. And I'm just gonna put all these gaskets, PCV valve, what's left, what needs to go on the car with it, somewhere in the box. And I'll keep you updated how it goes in America. So um, I wish Philip all the best with the engine, all happy miles and stuff. He have to run the engine in. So he already have oil filter in there and I advise him to do a couple of hundred miles, take the oil filter out, drain the oil, 
check for any debris in the oil filter and put fresh oil soon just to make sure whatever we've been cleaning and whatever is still in the engine as a dust or whatever it doesn't stay in the engine for a long time and it's better to do on the beginning more regular oil changes just to keep the engine fresh from inside so yeah the engine is spinning which is good i can't check the compressions because i have no fuel injectors so philip will be buying fuel injectors for additional 1300 dollars in the us that was the cheapest one he can get and we'll see how it goes if something happened with the engine i'll keep you updated i'm really hoping he will have just uh, fun with it and some many many miles and yeah so i'm gonna put the engine on the pallet now meanwhile we have too much to do unfortunately too many v8s too many cars too many too many too many and I'll see you in another video where we will be working on something maybe more interesting, maybe something less interesting, don't know. But uh, thank you for watching guys, we'll see you in the next video and take care for now. See ya.